Hello everyone, welcome to the channel, my name is Cordant and today I'm going to be making a video where I go into some more detail about the mods I showed in a recent video I uploaded that I simply entitled Baldur's Gate Short Showcase of Awesome Mods. I know, it's not specific at all, um, but these were just some mods that got recommended to me that contain some features that I've always wanted ever since I started playing Baldur's Gate. So I wanted to try them out, I immediately installed them, I loved what I saw, so you know, I was happy, I was excited, I wanted to share it with you guys, so I just made that very freeform video, just showing them off, so you guys knew they existed. So something I also mentioned in that video description was that if you guys uh, would like a better demonstration or if you wanted to know how to install them or anything like that, to leave a comment, and I was very happy because a lot of people did. Uh, a lot of people commented saying they liked the mod, asking questions about the mod, how to install it, uh, which order to install it in. So I will take that as a sign of interest and as such I am making this video explaining exactly how to do that. So, um, just for some context, some of these video instructions here are going to be similar to a video I made recently which is my mod installation guide. I will leave a link to it right here at the top of the video and also in the video description, so check it out if you guys are interested. Um, a lot of the processes will be similar. So to start, I have my Baldur's Gate 2 Enhanced Edition uh, install directory open right here. This is where we're going to be copying some files. And I also have my mods folder open over here with the mods we are going to be looking at. I just have the zip files over here, this is what you download, and I extracted them over here just for, you know, ease of use and making it easy for you guys to see. So, um, my Baldur's Gate 2 current installation is exactly in the state I left it at the end of my mod installation guide. So this this is a recent installation of Baldur's Gate 2 Enhanced Edition. It's using the latest version available and I installed in it the Ascension mod, Rogue Rebalancing, Ice Rendification, SCS and Twix Anthology. Okay, so I have all of these mods installed in my current installation. And something very cool to mention is even though there is an order in which you need to install your mods, the ones I'm going to be showing off right here can be installed right at the end. So you don't need to reinstall anything, you can simply start using them. So that's a, a very big upside in my book. <laughs> okay, so let's begin. First things first, I have the links for the mods open right here. They are also going to be in the video description, so you can just go there and click it. And we're going to be starting with EEEX. Maybe there's a better way to pronounce the name of this mod, but this is the way I do it. Uh, this is made by Mr. Bub13. He's a very active member of the community. He has made some very awesome mods. He has worked extensively in the Icewind Dale 2 Enhanced Edition, which is a playthrough I'm also currently uploading to my channel. So he's done a lot of awesome work. Every time I have a question or a problem, I go to him and he's very, very informative and very helpful. So very cool guy. So in his page for EEEX, he has a description of what the mod is, how you can get it, what it does. I will simply be focusing on what's relevant for the video right here. So the first thing to mention is that EEEX is actually a prerequisite, it is a requirement for the other mods I will be showing. You need to have this one installed first in order for the other ones to work. The second thing I want to mention is this is still in alpha. This is an alpha version of this mod, so there may be some bugs, there may be some unexpected behavior, but I can tell you from personal experience that personally I haven't found any mods yet, but I have also not played extensively with the mods as of yet either. Okay, so do keep that in mind. It only works for the Windows platform, however macOS and Linux support is planned for release, and this only works for the enhanced editions. So I know this is bad news for you guys that like playing with the originals, but yeah, it only works for the enhanced edition. Um, there's also some information here about versioning. I will be focusing on the latest versions of the mod, 
which used the latest versions of Baldur's Gate Enhanced Editions, at least at the time of this recording. I don't really know of a reason why you'd want to use the older versions, but if you do, keep in mind you will need to be playing with an older version of Baldur's Gate. Like I said, I will be focusing on this one here. The final thing to mention is that, and this is different from the other mods I showed you guys how to install, so like SCS and Rogue Rebalancing and all that, in order to actually use the functionality of this mod, you will need to start up your game by launching a different executable. So, while normally you would install SCS and whatever mod you want and then start up your game normally, for this one, you will need to launch the game via an Infinity Loader executable that will be in your installation directory. Don't worry, I will show all of this, but just keep that in mind. So, this is the first mod. If you want to download it, you have the download link right here. If we click it, we're going to see the versions. I will be using the latest one. Click it again. And you have this page where you can just select what kind of format you want to use. I will be using the zip file format. And downloading this would get me this file right here, the zip file. Extracting it will give me this folder. And this is the contents. Okay, so very, very simple. The second mod we will be using is Bub's Spell Menu Extended. So, made by the same guy, Bub13. This is the mod that will show the spell menu in a much more usable way, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, and I really, really like it. So, we will also be installing this one. Like it says in the installation instructions, you need EEEX. If not, it won't work. But if you have it, you are good to go. So, you can just go to this releases section right here. Click on the latest one, which is the one I will be using. And same thing again, you can just click source code zip and download the file. Now, these are actually the only two mods that I'm using in my other short showcase video. But since I'm doing this with some more detail and some more time, I decided to also include the third mod, which I also think is very, very cool. This one is made by Tapahob and it's called BG2 Radar Overlay. Something important, it's called BG2, but this also works for BG1, okay? So you can also use it there. Now, calling this a mod, in my opinion, might not be the, the best denomination to give this, as this is, like the name indicates, an overlay. So this is an application that will be running on top of your Baldur's Gate game instead of embedded in your Baldur's Gate game. If you don't know what these words mean, if you don't understand the difference, don't worry, I will simply show you guys how you can use it. So, same thing, you can just go over here, click on the zip file, download it, and I will show you how to install it. Okay, so with this out of the way, we have all of our zip files over here, I have extracted them, these are the folders, and these are Waydo mods. So, if you checked out my mod installation guide, these should be familiar. You will simply select them both, copy them, and paste them into your Baldur's Gate 2 installation directory. All of these mods work in Baldur's Gate 1 as well. The installation process is exactly the same, so I will simply be doing it for my Baldur's Gate 2 game, which is the one I don't currently have the mods on. So, now that I pasted the files here, I will simply look for the setup and I will double click it. You will get the familiar um, command line right here asking you, do you want to install the component EEEX? I'm going to say I, because yes, I want to install it. Press enter. Then it's going to ask which components you want. So, do you want to enable the effect menu module where you left shift on hover to view spells affecting creature? This is an awesome, awesome feature, so yes, we do. Install. And do you want to enable a timer module, which is a visual indicator for model actions, contingency spells, and spell or item cooldowns? This is the bar you saw next to the portrait. I will also say, yes, I want to install it. And you're done. So another advantage of these mods, they are very, very quick to install. We are done with EEEX. For 
the spell menu extended, it's also a way to mod. Same thing again, copy, paste, look for the executable, double click it, same thing again, install bub spell menu extended, yes indeed, done. Okay, very quick. <laughs> and finally, for the BG overlay, this one is different. This one you don't actually install, this one you will simply copy the file and paste it into your directory. You don't need to run it, I will show you how to use it in a little bit. So, as you can see, the installation process is extremely simple, uh, it's familiar to any other way to mod, and next we're gonna jump into the game and actually check out what we can do with these awesome mods. So, let's go to it. Okay, so let's actually see the mods in action. So like I was saying, for these mods, we will need to launch our game using this Infinity Loader uh, startup executable. This is something that's referenced in the documentation of EEEX. It's going to tell you here in the function section. Um, you do not need to download anything, you don't need to install anything. When you install EEEX, the Infinity Loader executable will get generated for you, okay? So you don't need to worry about anything. To start up the game, you can simply double click the Infinity Loader or you can do a send to desktop shortcut and rename it to something like BG2 Infinity Loader, like I had done here. Okay, so let's start up our game and see our mods in action. I created a save game here, which I think will exemplify the mods rather well. <laughs> and you'll also notice that my game is currently in window mode, which I don't usually do. The reason for this is that another mod, the BG Overlay UI, the one we placed in our installation folder, this one right here, requires the game to be opened in window mode. I'm not sure if this is going to be something that's always going to be like this, or if in a a later release it's going to be different, but for the time being you will need the game to be in window mode. You just come over here or again you can also create a shortcut, you open up the overlay, it's going to ask you for administrative permissions, maybe the screen went black for you guys, I'm sorry. I just said yes and you'll see that you have this little panel over here. So not well. only that, it will also put the game in full screen borderless for you and it will show you some information here. I will go into some more detail about this mod in a second. So right now I'm gonna start by showing off the, um, the spell menu extended mod, which is mostly for spell casters naturally, where if you wanna cast a spell, if you click this button, you're gonna have this awesome, awesome menu over here. It's gonna break up your spells per level. It's gonna make it a lot simpler to find them it's just a lot more usable. So if you've ever played with a mage or a cleric or a sorcerer or a druid <laughs> or a bard, you will know that when you have a certain number of spells, when you want to find the later spells, you need to click the button and then click right a bunch of times and then you're gonna find your spell. Something like time stop, I often click the, the, um, the spell menu and then I have to click to the right a bunch of times, you know, you know the drill. If you are playing with someone like Eri, for example, which is a cleric mage, you're gonna have to click through all of the cleric spells and then all of the mage spells in order to reach the later level mage spells. So it, it can be a little bit cumbersome. So this mod makes everything a lot more usable. If you cannot find your spell over here, you can simply type it out. In this case, if I wanna find Horrid Wilting, I can just type Horrid, for example, and it will filter out everything else. Same thing for mirror image, you know, whatever you want. Protections, protection, ah, yeah, that's a good example. If you wanna find your protections, you can just type protection, and you'll see I have protection from petrification, magic energy, and magical weapons. So, also quite useful. Another thing you can do with this mod is, you have this button here, which will only show you your mage spells, you have the button in the middle which will show all the spells and you have this button right here which will only show the cleric spells. 
So again, this is mostly useful if you are playing a multi-class that has both classes as spellcasters. In the example of Eri, Cleric Mage, you could see only the Cleric spells, only the Mage spells, or every single spell. Another feature you have, you can kind of customize this any way you want, you can resize this. Personally, I like the maximum size, but you can do whatever you want. You can also put it to the left or in the middle. Here, any way you prefer, you can customize it for what you like. If I press escape, I go back to the, menu, uh, to the game, because I didn't choose any spell. And now we are going to go over the other functionality, which is from EEEX. So this is included in EEX by default. I have my character here, Mr. Drainsley, he's a sorcerer. He has a bunch of buffs on. And usually, if it's an allied character and you want to see what kind of buffs he has on, you can open up your character portrait and you can kind of, you know, check it here to see what they have. And this works. This works fine. But if it's a neutral character or an enemy, you have no way of doing it. So, with EEEX, if you simply mouse over the character and you press Shift, aha, you will see this little pop-up here which is going to show you exactly which effects are on that character. To note, this will only show you active effects. It will not show you something like a passive buff from an item. Okay, so if I had a, a fire resistance ring on, it will not show that fire resistance here. It will only show you the active effects. Still, very, very useful, very, very handy especially if you're fighting if you're playing the game with SCS and fighting spellcasters this will help you out tremendously I am now gonna go to the other mod which is the extra one this one I did not showcase in my shorter video and this is the BG2 overlay okay BG2 radar overlay so when you open up the overlay you will have this panel here which will show you every single character it can see on the screen. In this case, it does something I don't particularly like. It's showing you there's a golden skull in the room, which there is, um, but yeah, it shouldn't be here. In any case, let's ignore this for now and let's focus on one of our characters. For example, in my sorcerer. So if I look for Drainsley and I click over here, I know a lot of you are probably already salivating like, oh my God, that's so awesome. And, you know, it is very, very awesome. Um, by clicking on the character, you will see this pop-up show up. It will tell you pretty much everything about that character. It will show you the level. I'm level 18. It will show you the name. It will show you the class, sorcerer, and also the race. I'm an elf. It will also show you, much like the, um, the mouse over shift click, it will show you all of the active effects I have on with the advantage of also showing you how long that buff will still be on. The way this works from what I can understand is if you have a number dot another number, I believe this is the number of turns and this is the number of rounds. So stone skin will last 58 turns and three rounds while my spell shield will only last for four more rounds. Okay, same thing for all the other things. Not only that, you will also see all of the stats of the character. So my strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. It will show you stuff like my hit points, my number of attacks per round. I am a sorcerer using a sling, so I only attack once per round. It will show you my AC, negative nine, tackle, Experience here, this does not mean the experience I have gained thus far. This is the amount of experience you would get if you kill this character. Okay, so since this is a playable character, you get nothing. But on an enemy, you would see a value here. You will see the alignment, you will see the saves, which is very useful if you want to use something like, for example, a blind or a finger of death. You might want to know first if they are vulnerable to it or not. Um, other than that, it will also show you all of the character's resistances. And this will show you passive resistances as well. So, let's use Resist Fire here as an example. 
I do not have any protection from fire buff on, as you can see. However, my character not only is a sorcerer, but he is also a dragon disciple. So dragon disciples at this level are pretty much, well not pretty much, are exactly immune to fire. They have 100% fire resistance. And that's why you see this resistance right here. This one, for example, resists magic damage 127% is because we have protection from magic energy. So everything makes sense. It will also show you which weapon I am using. I'm carrying, I'm using bullets plus two. And you also have this section right here, which tells you effects on the character. So in this case, it's telling me that I am immune to disintegrate, horror, some instant death effects, level drain, morale break modifier, morale modifier, and silence. So let's, Let's see why that is. For the instant death effects, I am immune to them because I have death ward up. Okay, so that makes sense. I am immune to horror and morale modifiers because I have uh, resist fear up. But it also says that I'm immune to level drain and that I'm immune to silence. But I have no buff showing this. So let's investigate. If I open up my inventory, we can see the items I am using. And in this case, the reason why I am immune to level drain and silence is because my amulet of power here gives me a passive vocalize, so it means silence, and it also gives me immunity to level drain. Okay, so this will show you everything about your character, including passive resistances, uh, buffs from items, duration on your spells, uh, stuff like level, which can also be useful if you're fighting undead and you want to see if you can turn undead on them using a cleric. This is useful information, you know, a lot of stuff. Okay, so for now, I'm simply going to close off my portrait here and I'm going to talk about the final aspect of the EEEX mod, which is this bar right here. If you'll see this bar, don't yell. It keeps I can going up. Just fine. This is because this will go up for the duration of an entire round, which is six seconds. This bar is on Jan and not on anyone else because Jan is using fine traps and detect illusions. Why is this such a huge quality of life for me as well? Because oftentimes I might know there is a trap somewhere in this area. Let's imagine, for example, there's a trap where Edwin is, but I don't know where it is. So I, I would send Jan over here and I would say, detect traps. But since the game only checks for traps at the end of each round, I would need to wait six seconds to make sure that the trap was or not detected. So I would wait six seconds, nothing got, nothing got found, I would move up a little bit, I would wait six seconds, same thing again, move up again. So, you know, it's boring, it's tedious, it's not very fun. It's one of the things I like the least in Baldur's Gate is the trap detection. Using this bar, you will know exactly when the trap is going to be detected. So, once the, the bar reaches the top of the portrait, that's when the trap would be discovered. So, right now. Okay. So this can be very useful, you don't need to count in your head one, two, three, you know, up to six. You will know when it's gonna happen. The same thing for Detect Illusion. If a thief just went invisible right here, I know that I will only be able to detect him once the bar reaches up here. So very, very handy. There is also another functionality for spell casting, but that one I will show once we begin our action here. So, Be quick with let's it. start. I'm gonna send Mr. Corgan here to open up this this uh, sarcophagus. Actually, not you. I'm gonna send Adam. Well Which is safer. And the golden skull is talking to us. And I'm gonna say, yeah, I found all the pieces. And I'm also gonna turn off the AI. I shall go for with all speed, this comrades. And Mr. Kangax the Lich has showed up. Now, 
If you'll see here, the Golden Skull has disappeared and now Ken Gax the Lich has appeared. And if we click it, we can have the information regarding Mr. Kangax. So this is something that's very useful, uh, especially this particular fight for newer players, because there's a lot of resistances and passive effects which are not obvious, and this would help you out tremendously. So we know that Kangax is a Lich Necromancer. He is level 30. We have all of the information about him right here. We know that he is worth 22,000 experience points. And we also know his passive resistances. Also very important, we will know that he requires at least a plus one weapon to be hit. So by default, Kangax is immune to non-magical weapons. And again, a newer player might come here, start hitting him with a normal longsword, nothing happens and it's not obvious why it's not happening. Um, he is also immune to spells up to level 4, this one is even worse. If you start hitting him with a weapon, it doesn't work, so you start sending in magic missiles or fireballs, nothing works. He doesn't have any buff, so why isn't this working? Yeah, he is immune to spells up to level 4. He can also see through invisibility and he is immune to a couple of spells. So we're gonna start the fight. I turned off the AI because I want him to have a chance to to load up his SCS pre-buffs. There we are. And if you guys saw my understanding SCS mages and how to beat them video, you will know that if you engage in a mage battle, the first thing you should do is look at the log to see what the enemy has on. So SCS applied a bunch of pre-buffs here. Um, he has Fear Aura Energy Blades, which by the way, updated the weapon he is using. Uh, he has a bunch of protections like Spell Turning Shield, Protections, yada yada yada. He triggered a Contingency, which also had a Horrid Wilting. And he also has a Spell Shield. Okay, so we've analyzed the log, we've memorized the protections he has, and we also have some visual indicators, like this disc on the ground and this glowing thing around him. But, you know, sometimes we, we can't memorize everything or there's more mages in the party. And this is where the mouse over and shift is gonna help out tremendously. It's gonna tell me, he is immune to abjuration, so I need to go through that. He cannot be damaged by acid or fire or magic. He cannot be hit by magical weapons. He has a spell shield, he has spell turning and he has a stone skin. So all of this is very useful information when trying to defeat Kangax. Likewise, we can also look at the overlay and we can see the same thing over here. It's gonna show you the icon, it's gonna show you the description if you mouse over it. How long he has of his buffs, which is very handy. So if you see that his protection from magical weapons has wore off, you can just send in someone very quickly to smack him and maybe interrupt him. Okay, so very, very useful. Um, okay, so with this information, since we are trying to fight an enemy spellcaster, what do we need to know? We know he has a spell shield, so we need to take care of that first. Then he has immunity to abjuration, and he also has spell turning. So we need to remove all of these three in order to breach him to remove his protections and actually be able to hit. So, to start off, yes. I'm gonna send Mr. Actually Mr. Jan because he's closest I see. to use a secret word on Mr. Kangax. And this here is for the purpose of removing his spell shield. I don't know if you just heard. It's kind of subtle, but I did teach you this in the in the Understanding SCS Mages video. There was a small audio cue, like a glittering sound. That's the, the spell shield getting dispelled. Okay, so now we can start working on his other protections. He's casting Time Stop, I'm pretty sure of it. I'm gonna start casting my own. Okay, he has his Time Stop. Improved alacrity. 
Dark Planetar on top of me, which is not cool. He silenced Edwin, uh, Anaman. Okay, so we have a bunch of stuff, but something that was actually interesting, and you'll see this slow here, during his time stop, his protection from magical weapons wore off, and Anaman managed to get a hit in and slowed Kangax. <laughs> it's pretty funny. So, now that it doesn't have protection, we can actually pick up what Corgan and say, one? go fight. Uh, I hope I don't die to this planetar. I don't feel like cancelling my my time stop. Okay, but that's my time stop. And now that it doesn't have a spell shield, we can use the time stop trick. So I'll move forward a little bit. And he has abjuration immunity, and he has spell turn. So we're gonna need two anti magic spells to get through this. So Ruby Ray number one. Done. Move back a little bit. Ruby Ray number two. We're gonna wait. Ah, and this is the other thing I wanted to mention. Since you can only cast one spell per round, unless you have improved alacrity, you don't exactly know when your next spell is gonna go off. You only know it's gonna be in the next round. So this bar is actually showing us exactly when this other Ruby Ray is gonna go off. So if you'll notice, it got cast. Okay, so very handy if you want to know when you're going to be able to cast another spell. So for example, I know that while the bar is going up, I can move freely instead of waiting for the spell to cast. Okay, so in this case I'm actually going to try and protect myself with protection from magical weapons because of the planetar. There we go. And now we will see that his spell turning and his spell and his immunity abjuration have both been dispelled, so we can now, now? breach him. We're gonna use breach on him. Let's use our axe here. You guys are fighting. I will need to deal with this guy sooner or later, but for now, I wanna kill this guy here. You get a mirror image. So, we are already hitting him, we can see the health going down and the damage being taken. But the breach is gonna hit right now. And you will see that all of his buffs have gone off. Okay, so this is now a naked Kangax. He is vulnerable to a lot of stuff. In this case, I'm just gonna kill him with physical damage. But you could use other stuff as well. What? I'm kind of hoping that Jan doesn't get murdered by this planetar. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so he is in his phase transition. We're gonna start killing this planetar, hopefully. I'm actually gonna use... he has some shadows and the sword spider, and like I talked about before, that spell is a great way to clear out summons, except more powerful summons like a planetar. So I'm gonna send Corgan and Anaman to the planetar, and I'm gonna use that spell to clear out these lesser summons here. You go over there. Okay, so Jan is safe. Oh god, Edwin is not. Edwin, get out of there. Kangax the Demilich has appeared. And this is kind of weird because it swapped. So we're gonna close this one. We're gonna end the dialogue here. That spell went off, killed all of the summons. So now my friends can actually move and kill this planetar. And let's take a look at Kangax the Demilich. So Kangax the Demilich is a level 30 Enchanter Demilich. You will see he doesn't actually have a lot of hit points. But the most important thing to note, especially, once again, for newer players, if you haven't checked the wiki, if you don't know this already by heart or because somebody told you, Kangax can be kind of frustrating because he requires a plus four weapon to be hit. Okay, so if you are trying to hit him with the Flail of Ages plus three, 
it will do nothing. If you're trying to hit him with the axe that Corgan is currently using, it will do nothing. So you will need a plus 4 weapon to actually hit him. He is also immune to spells up to level 4, he can see invisibility, and he has a bunch more immunities right here. Not only that, he is damn near immune to physical damage. He has 90% damage reduction to all kinds of physical damage. So, we're gonna leave this over here so we can inspect him. We're gonna wait for his rebuff to go off. And we're gonna try to kill this guy before he kills Edwin. Edwin, stay safe, man. Okay. So, his pre-buff was actually just a chain contingency with protection from magical weapons, a symbol stun and a symbol fear. And again, he doesn't need a lot of pre-buffs because he is very, very resistant to a lot of stuff. So, uh, Edwin is casting protection from magical weapons. He has protection from magical weapons as well. So I will try to breach them with Jan. Okay, Edwin is safe from the planetar. Ooh, smart damage. So as soon as I started casting my breach, he also had a contingency for spell deflection. So we need to remove the spell deflection before he can be breached. For that, we can just use Mr. Dainsley here. Send in a Ruby Ray. Okay, so the Ruby Ray went off. He got dispelled. He is casting a spell trigger at Ainsley with Remove Magic, Greater Malice and Death Spell. Okay. You two are killing the Planetar. Ooh, I got dispelled. Because my Abjuration Immunity went off. Or wore off, I should say. Let's get a Stone Skin here. Okay, but my Breach also went off from Mr. Jan Janssen, which is very important. And now, we can actually do something like send in a Bolt of Glory at Mr. Kangax here. Uh, I still want to kill the Planetar first, because this is the, the biggest threat right now. So let's just do that and move Edwin over here. I think he healed himself. He is under fire, move back. Come on, kill that guy. He improved haste on Corgan. He improved haste on... Oh, Animan has it, okay. That is perfect. Okay, so we can also see right here, which is very cool. Since Kangax didn't have any kind of spell turning, spell deflection or spell trap, Vaconia was able to target him with a high level spell, in this case the Bolt of Glory. She dealt 22 magic damage, because he cannot resist magical damage, and it actually interrupted his spell. And I think that was a time stop. That was a big, big win for us. Okay, let's continue. The Planetar is dead. I'm gonna heal Corgan. And we're gonna send our people to start beating on Mr. Kangax over there. Animan is also gonna use a Bolt of Glory. And Mr. Corgan is gonna swap into his Daystar. So, this is an example of how you can defeat Mr. Kangax the Damilich. You can kill him by damage, for example with Bolts of Glory or Sun Rays. You'll see here that he took some damage from Vicky. And you can also use something like Daystar. This is only a plus 2 weapon, but if you'll see right here, it has a plus 4 to hit versus evil creatures. Kangax is evil aligned, so he will be hit by this. It's a plus 4 weapon, so he's gonna get hit. He will also take double damage against undead. That's just a bonus. <laughs> so this is actually the only weapon I have right now that can kill him. So let's hope that Mr. Corgan here doesn't get killed first. So heal up. And go fight. Okay, so... Oh, you are still under fire, really. Go over there. He buffed himself again, with protection from magical weapons. But we can go through that really quickly with a breach, as we know. He's breached. He's no longer immune. Bolt of Glory from Animan. Some damage from Corgan. Damilich down. 
55,000 experience. Everybody can rejoice. And Ad Katla is safe from Kangax. <laughs> Just as a bonus for anybody wanting to know what you can get after killing Kangax. Uh, where is it? It's on the ground. Ah, it's on the ground. It's so, you get so simple to do. A very cool ring, which is Rig of Gax, which will give you plus two to AC, plus two to saving throws, more magic resistance. You regenerate hit points. You are immune to disease and poison. You can become invisible. You can have improved haste. It does everything. <laughs> okay, so hopefully this was a, a good example of how you can use. Uh, these mods to your advantage. Uh, usually, I don't have this one on, uh, you know, for a normal playthrough all the time. But if I want to see something interesting, like I found a, a, you know, a particularly unique enemy like Kangax or Demogorgon or something, and if you want to see, uh, you know, what they are, what resistances they have, what immunities. This, I think, is honestly the best option you have. This is really, really good. And then, you know, the mouse over and shift, very useful. And this can be on during any normal playthrough because it's not intrusive in any way. Uh, the spell menu, it's amazing. And also something I wanted to show with this panel, there is also this tiny button here, which will just hide that panel. And if you right click it, it's also going to give you some options. So if you only want to see your enemies, you can simply say hide my party members. Or if there's, for example, bats in the area, you can say hide neutrals and they will not show up. You can also hide allies if you have some kind of, you know, external companion in your party temporarily. Um, like Drizzt, for example, you can do that as well. You know, you can customize this in some ways. You can change the fonts, all kinds of stuff. So, there you go. These are three mods that I was very, very impressed with recently. I did not know they existed. And this is something I will be using from here on out on, I guess, very many occasions. <laughs> so, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Now you know where you can get them. You know how, uh, how to install them. You know how to use them. And you even saw a cool fight where we put into practice some of the things we learned in our um, Professor Edwin Odesseron SCS Mages, how to beat them. <laughs> so, as usual, guys, thank you so much for being here with me, watching some Baldur's Gate um, nerdy stuff. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. If you are interested in getting notified about other videos I put through, um, consider subscribing, it's a free and easy way to support my channel and I'm bringing out videos every single day. And until some other video guys, stay safe everyone.